that's why, and that's some forward thinking, and that's looking down the road, people have to understand that it's not just this year, right now. I, do, I understand forward thinking, but this is a tough economy, tougher than any other year. It's going to be a hard, it's going to be a sacrifice for families to support the override, putting back the general government cuts, making sure our education doesn't fall apart. It's the wrong year to try and do long-term planning, especially when the very property money, over a million dollars, will be put into that account. I, I just think it's the wrong move. Yes, Bill Howard. Well, you know, you know, it's rather the, the whole thing is rather interesting because, of course, I, you know, I'm the one, I'm the one who advocated taking money out of stabilization to you know, pay this, to pay this. But, but, you know, if you're going to get an override, I think you want to put it back. I, I said let's use the money, and I'm, I'm glad we're using it for this purpose. But if you get an override, you take it back. But the part that's interesting is, is that I hear people saying don't do this, and yet I hear people saying you need a broad-based override. If you don't have these back, how do you get a broad-based override if you don't have the trash fees in there? I don't understand that part of it. You know, I mean, if, if you want a broad-based override, this is a broad-based override. You've got items in here that are not school items. I hear shaking heads. I don't understand that. Now, look. Let's continue the list. And then we'll... Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to do. Uh, okay, so... The $85,000 is in the... Uh, Cuts. Okay. The seven, the seven oh eight nine seventy five. So four hundred fifty eight point five. So four hundred fifty nine thousand. Oh wait a minute, we haven't finished. No, no. So uh, increased athletic fees. No, I'm just saying, as far as that first page. Yeah. Seven oh eight. Yeah. About four hundred fifty nine thousand. Four hundred fifty eight thousand. Okay. So, next step. Next one? 35, no, no, sorry. 35,000 for the school, we're going to keep that. Uh, yes. Uh, defer. Yep, that's that. What? Uh, defer to the school committee if they want it back? Yes, no, no. You don't want it back? You do want it back? Unfortunately, we don't have it. We hadn't considered that. We didn't think we'd be at this kind of point. Um, we don't have a position as a school committee. So, okay. All right, we'll uh, reduced vocational school assessment, that, that's okay. Accepted that anyway. loan, okay. Additional lottery, okay. Period. All right, so now we get into 85,000. Right? Yeah. The 85 and the 120. Yeah, the 85 yeah. and the 120. Right. What's the 120? Small capital. School capital. Oh, yeah, okay. And again, if that gets restored, the seven thousand yeah. doesn't come out of free cash. Right. Yeah. So basically, it's another two hundred. Let's add that up. So we had four fifty-eight. Yeah. Four fifty-eight. Okay, now let's look at it from the point of view of where we're at. What we did was we'd be reducing the school budget to the tune of what's the number Steve? The seventy five, right? We'd be reducing the school budget by three seventy five. The school request for an override because we've funded that already. And then we're adding six sixty three. So the eight hundred is more like $1.1 million over, I guess, what we're talking about. A little more. You still have $495,000 at the school request and $120,000 at fringe benefits on, uh, yeah, benefits on those people. Yeah. yeah. Plus so the $600,000 and some that you have. So yeah. you get them over a million, too. Uh, it's in that range. So we'll, we have to get a, an accurate accounting of that. So what we would be doing as a result of what appears to be the position of the board is to restore specific things that we've gone under in an override budget, reduce the school override request by the amount that we've funded it in the standard budget, and request support for everybody for the uh, override. It's approximately $750,000.
and then so, plus priority two and one. So two and three. 50. It would be about a 50-50 override, 50, half of the override would be for school, half the override would be for town. Shifting more the other way. Yeah, shifting maybe a little more. Close. And then you've got approximately 750000 on this one. Where'd you get the 750000 I've got the, I've got the, uh, I've got the 458. This is a 458. I've got the, uh, 85. 85. And 120. And I got 663. Plus, plus the other 85. Plus the other 83 here. The other 83 and other cuts. Recreation, Treasurers, and uh, DBW. All right, 83. I think it's a 746. Greg will come up with the numbers. Yeah, right. The record, no, but I wanted to get it. Just, I think people need ballpark. to understand the ballpark. Yeah, no. ballpark. Okay. You're about a million. Okay. Say that again. We close to a million. A million two plus the benefits. And plus the other. About a million. Yeah, a million. Plus two. We love a million three. Three and three and a quarter. So basically, the uh, school budget, three hundred. Well, three hundred seventy-five thousand bucks. Those the priority. No, we took. Yeah, right. Three hundred seventy-five. The school budget gets funded for, uh, above the status quo. Above the status quo, which brings them to priority one. This is Wednesday night, Bob, so for next week's transcript, you'll have a more accurate number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually could have stayed home today. Right. <laughs> 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 the wages office may not be in next week. <laughs>
talked about it before a little bit, but uh, um, originally it had quite a lot of jumps for classes in it. The way this was uh, originally put together was put together by looking at all of the town homes in the end and basically accumulating a list of parcels that uh, could potentially qualify to be built on. Uh, and the parcels were then broken down initially into one to other areas where the cost of these parcels, or the value of these parcels, were such that affordable properties could be built and sold at an affordable price. We then had a public hearing on it, uh, where we had rather large turnout. Uh, and there was some objection to the fact that we feel that a lot of the parcels were in the worldwide um, market pond. And I don't know if they thought that was intentional or not, but it's, it's a matter of fact that, that that's the way it came out. Because the value of the parcels over there were broken up um, before 1925 in many cases, but a lot of it was done in 1925. And those parcels were broken up to small pieces because they were camps. And so the value of those parcels is small, is low. And the net result is they make them a prime candidate for an affordable property, for an affordable housing situation. Uh, after that meeting, we went out and uh, went through that list and uh, culled it down again by actually visiting every single one of the properties and actually cut the list down by about two thirds. Uh, currently, there are 23 parcels that are actually located at 11 sites. And the reason that there are 11 sites is some of these parcels requires the combining of a couple of them, two or three of them in some cases, to create a lot large enough um, to, to, um, to actually put an affordable property on. Uh, the reason that we began this and, and, and we looked at this is that we're aware that even though the Berry Center right now takes care of our uh, 40B requirements or our uh, affordable income requirements at this time. When the uh, census is redone in 2010, we know that because of the building that's done since the last census that we're going to come up short again. And this is an attempt for, uh, by, by the planning board to have a plan in place ahead of time to find some pieces of property uh, where if a 40 came knocking on our door after that census, we actually have a plan in place that relates to our master plan that says these are the areas uh, that we've chosen for you to build in. And uh, if they don't necessarily like those areas and they go back to uh, mass housing court, uh, it's likely that they say, no, they planned ahead, uh, they filed a master plan, they planned ahead, these are the areas in that plan. If you don't want to build it, go to another town. So it gives us a level of protection, a level of control over how some of this is done, which is a little uh, better than just letting it randomly uh, come about again the way it started a while ago. Um, it doesn't mean that, in, in, that after 2010 that anybody will ever come back here again, you know, or try to build in these areas. Uh, but at some point it may happen. We don't have that much land left for development, so we're not going to accumulate, I don't think, too many more uh, houses in the, in the next 10 years or so. Uh, however, we do need to have something in our, in our uh, in our property to show that if somebody does come looking that we've done our, that we've prepared for it as it has occurred. So again, there are 23 parcels that we have uh, that we've identified 11 on 11 sites, and uh, the general areas they are located in is, is, is uh, there's some in the close to the town center, some near Main Street, some in Martin's Pond. The number of Martin's Pond has been reduced dramatically as a result of uh, of our uh, looking at all of and also, um, I spoke to, uh, to the town administrator about it for a couple of minutes at one point. And he did uh, point out that, that uh, in the process of doing the wastewater plan, we need to make sure we hold on to a couple of parcels over there for pumps for lift stations. And that was a very good point. And I brought that back to the planning board. And we, we did look at some of those parcels. And we determined that we have a couple of locations that are no longer on the list that would be sufficient for that. So we do, we do thank you for that input. That was something that had to be thought of and went right into the plan. Uh, the map locations, uh, 